Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're going to be talking about the spell Sleep. Ah, <sighs> Sleep. This was this is a spell. I you know I've played a lot of low level casters. I don't I don't make it very high as a caster usually, but uh, yeah, I always try to use Sleep, and it always it seems like it should be cool, but it always winds up being a disappointment. But um, yeah, you're going to tell me how to use it better, I'm sure. I hope to. I, um, I'm a big proponent of sleep. I actually think this might be one of my top five favorite spells in Dungeons and Dragons. I love sleep. Whoa. This spell is super cool. Um, it's, it is definitely flexible, and you have to be ready to use it at odd times. Um, it kind of does a lot of different things in a lot of different circumstances. It's a lot of Con crowd control early game whenever you're dealing with like five to ten hp creatures um it is kind of a means of removing some of them but it also can they can quickly and easily get back up if they have friends right so you have to think about what your situations of using it then but it also can be a means of putting some guards to sleep it can be a means of uh getting yourself out of a sticky situation that involves a couple of creatures that you are able to isolate um if you're i think what the one of the coolest elements of the spell is that it hits an area and it makes it so if someone is next to a bunch of creatures with less health than them, it's very hard to put them to sleep. And it makes it interesting. It makes it so you want to try and isolate people to get better sleeps on better targets where you can maybe get more of the damage aimed at things. I don't know. I think all the little mini games around this make it very fun. Right, now, am I right in thinking that it uh, you cast it as an area and whoever's in that area, the what is it, the people with the lowest hp go down first yes so you roll 5d8 okay. let's say you uh on your 5d8 you high roll and get 40 oh my god you nutted um absolute best play case scenario starting with whoever's lowest hp let's say they have five that person goes to sleep and you have 35 hit points left and then it checks the next lowest hp let's say it's seven and you have 28 hit points left and then you just keep going until either you cannot put another creature to sleep because it's too many hit points or you run out of sleep hit points all right now um the one thing i will give it credit for theoretically i've never used it like this but um I thought about this. Uh, I think color spray works the same way, but um, blind, I believe, yeah, blind. right. But it, I, I, I like as a way of identifying who the weakest members of an enemy party is. Sure. Um, if you're doing it at that point, I mean, I don't know how useful that information is once they're already <laughs> asleep. <laughs> well, I mean, because it doesn't still yeah, tell you which thinking, of the two people that didn't go unconscious yeah. had more hit points, right? It just tells you that one has the least um or you didn't fall asleep but you know i guess that's some can be somehow useful well I'm, i mean i'm thinking because whenever i cast sleep you know they get woken up the next turn anyway so sure at least i know uh this guy's probably only got like three hit points mm. and take uh, him out of the party real quick i think you really if you want sleep to be good you need to be putting at least two things to sleep because then you spend an action and they have to at least spend two actions. And sometimes they're losing more than that because of the sleeping creatures are getting actions and initiative if we're talking about combat. So this definitely, um, 5d8 is less than you'd think. Um, it often feels like a lot of dice for a first level spell. You'd be like, oh my God, that's like a, almost a little over half a fireball for a first level spell. That's nuts. Um, but then you use it and you're like, some maybe one maybe two things sometimes you're one of those two things that goes under here um it can be tricky and it can be the kind of thing where it isn't necessarily obviously powerful and it also is the kind of spell that you kind of want to have damaged things already for it then to take effect which i think is super cool if you like if you've gotten if everyone's dealt like 1d8 damage to all of the monsters there's a way better chance most of them go fall asleep to this because there aren't saves involved they just check hp and if their hp is under it they go to sleep which means you kind of want to use this spell in the middle of combat, not necessarily the beginning of combat. Again, lots of neat little caveats and new or odds and ends to it that I think make it pretty interesting. And you can slowly adjust to get your maximum out of it. Yeah, that is cool. I never thought about using it that way. <laughs> yeah. I always <laughs> jump right out first thing, sleep. All right, let's see if we can knock out a couple of people. But uh, And I mean, that, that can be a bigger really good. impact. So you're like launching it out the gate can have a higher impact than launching it in the middle of combat. If you are able to knock two things down and eat four actions and your party just gets rounds of destroying the people that are awake, that's going to be very good. Um, also, if you could just take five creatures of the encounter, deal everyone does a round of damage to them and then you drop them all and then you just go around executing them, that's probably better, but not given. Um, risk reward, right? Need a little interesting thing. It also then requires you coordinate with your allies and be like, 
for the first time ever, we're not all focusing on one creature. Go ahead and hit lots of different things. Try and make more things go under. Again, changes in tactics. Interesting different use cases. I love that. All right. Uh, and on that note, sleep is uh, able to upcast. It is. How do you feel about that? I mean, 2d8 per spell level is a, is a lot. Like, as far as spells at upper levels goes, this, like, if you compare it to Fireball doing 86 damage at third level, this is doing 98 damage at third level. So this is conceivably better. It just needs to, you're, you're like distributing it among specific creatures and has to kill them all at once. It's weird. It's different, but it does scale very well. It, 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 every three levels getting 2d8 extra damage is around another creature at the low tier creatures and is helping you get to one tier higher creatures oftentimes. This is going to break a lot of odd barriers. You'll be able to whip this out of the fourth level spell, do 11d8 sleep to some things and drop like a hill giant. Like this can hit huge creatures sometimes. <laughs> with just, Excuse me again. You're good. Ludicrous amounts of dice being rolled relatively early in the game, all because the spell just scales stupidly well. It starts at a very high rate and it gets substantially better the higher you upcast it. Um, I don't well, know. I, I think it's also, quite good. Yeah, I was also thinking... Um, with what you were talking about before, just peppering the entire group, mm -hmm. especially if you have knowledge of like the ballpark amount of hit points each of these creatures is supposed to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can lay waste to the like you know half the party or half the uh, horde of creatures coming at you yeah. in, in one fell swoop. Sometimes all the party. Like if you have another caster in yeah. the group that lands a fireball before this, and then you drop this. That basically two shots everything. You bet you had a second. If you if two fireballs wouldn't be enough, but a little bit more than a fireball would have, this is better than that. And that's super cool. Um, yeah, it it hits a pretty huge area too. 20 foot radius is the same area as a fireball. So even at like the lowest tier, casting at a first level, you're pretty happy with that. Uh, casting at a third level, you're still like, yeah, this is a good enough area. I'm 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 pleased to use it. And that's just we're just only talking about the combat scenarios with this, whenever it is very, very usable out of combat too, of just dealing with like specific NBCs that are giving you trouble, putting some guards that notice you unconscious, giving you that extra minute you need to kind of get out of jail free. You have your barbarian tackle the one, you sleep the other, and you bail, right? And that is a neat little encounter that can kind of be facilitated with this. Yeah, that's, uh, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm still thinking about the combat uses. I'm excited sure. about it now. I will. It's pretty cool. I'll be getting sleep with my next caster. Character. Do it. I, I would definitely recommend this is a spell that encourages low level strategy. So this is going to sort of be your, a lot of people's foray into figuring out why do we, well, how can we change our tactics to actually meaningfully improve our odds at winning this? This is a spell that asks you to do that. This is a spell that says you can cast out the gate and it'll be sometimes fine. Sometimes it'll knock down two creatures and that's good enough. You can eke more out of it by trying to be strategic with it. You can try and get creatures to groove in the ways you want them. You can try and pull your paladins and barbarians out of the sleep range. You can try and finagle it so that you can get a better hits on it and put more creatures unconscious and then go around and stomp their brains out. That's a neat implication and use for it. Um, this is going to ask you for the first time for like, most of almost, not a lot of D&D &D combat is going to be what has the least amount of HP, kill it to reduce their actions. And this says how many things can we get on low HP to mass reduce their actions. That's yeah. Cool. I 100% agree. Wow, you've really change the hearts and minds here sam that's what i'm here to do even though i'm not going <laughs> to succeed sometimes and i know that sometimes i'm just shouting at the internet and they're shouting back and that's fine oh, but other times, can, uh, shout back in the comment section down below i'm i definitely can understand that there are moments where you want this spell to be awesome and then it just flounders where you think like all right this should knock out two to three of the guards they probably on like nine hp each and the the DM is like, no, those are all veterans that are, you know, here for a specific thing that I told you about. So I don't really have a problem saying that that isn't <laughs> enough to not drop any of them and only the barbarian falls asleep. That is going to be a real thing that happens sometimes. You're going to be like, oh, shit. Um, and that can be a moment where you can get some jadedness with the spell, I think. Um, but I think this is the thing where the more you practice with it, the more you figure out neat uses for it, the more you decide to change and adjust to specific encounters about it's going to be. There will be encounters where the spell is unusable. But there will be other encounters where the spell will really shine. All right, uh, Sam score four out of five. Love sleep. Really, sleep one of your top five favorite spells gets a four out of five. Yeah, I, I think I try to make the rating based off of how powerful I think the spell is, how much you have to adjust ah. the game to the spell. And you sleep will make some encounters moot. Sleep will be a powerful tool that you're, DM, you're as a DM, you're gonna have to think about sometimes. 
At the same time, this is a spell that's going to be bad in a lot of encounters. It's going to be bad. No, no, it's going to be bad in many encounters. It doesn't scale tremendously well. There's definitely going to be times where you'll just you'll reach the upper tiers and stop casting this altogether because you'll have better things to do. But for what it does, it does it very well. It's something I'm always happy to use. I often want this on my character sheet. I'm going to give it a five out of five based on the hypothetical usage I'll have from it later. If you always got the hypothetical nuts, this is a five, but you're not often getting <laughs> hypothetical nuts. All right. Well, that was sleep, everyone. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. And thank you, everyone else, for also joining us. We will see you next time. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, our full review of the spell, and other fun things.